Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. I am hot today, James. I am hot. You seem pissed. I'm pissed. You seem pissed. I am pissed. We got a big show today, James. A lot went on in the world. Right. Your fave gave birth. Real birth. Someone did. She has a baby now. <laughs> we all know that, you know, even if you do use a surrogate, it is still your child. You bet. And you do welcome that child into yeah, yeah, the yeah. world in the yeah. same way that anyone else I, would, except for that you don't exactly give birth. But yes, it is your child for yeah. sure. I like how you, you subscribe to that conspiracy theory, but nothing else in this world, which we'll get to in a second. But here's why I'm so hot, Jabes. I got, I, got, I got you a, a Mother's Day gift. Um, it was supposed to be a birthday gift that, right. got, that got shift to Mother's Day. Right. Um, Kept getting shifted and shifted and shifted. And then finally. Yeah. Here's the thing. Every dude out there knows um, when you're buying your wife something, right? Uh-huh. What you guys really want, like, and more than anything in this world is furniture, right? Nice furniture. Yeah. Nice furniture for your house. Every time you walk in, you feel great. You say, oh, man, I love this table. I love this couch. I love this thing, mm-hmm. right? You guys spend a lot of time on that. Yeah. But those are big ticket items yes. for a family. This is no different. I, we ordered a, a kitchen table. We have a new addition to the family, a new child. And we ordered this special handcrafted table oh, from yeah. Georgia Artisan. Reclaimed wood. I'm going ham on this Barrel. company today, yeah. Because it's one of those things where, you know, you look and you're like, eh, it doesn't really fit my house or, you know what I'm saying? Every house is different. Every style is different. We finally find this perfect table. Right. And they're like, look, it's going to take five or six weeks. This is the company Georgia Artisan. Right. By the way. Which is fine. We've used them before. <clears throat> we did. And it took, they it took actually, a while. They actually, but you know, you wait for it. It's handmade, blah, blah, blah. De- delivered by the owner. <laughs> right. It's the last time he puts it together. The last little, you know, pieces puts it together in your home. Yeah. Uh, gives you a card if you guys ha- you know, need anything else. <laughs> Has been contacting us. Hey, did you, you know, did you look at our wine racks? We've got all, we would love to do something else for you. Make something else for you. I've probably been hit up 10 times since we, sure, so we, we said, bought the other table great. and we said, hey, because we bought a dining room table from them, wanted a kitchen table to match. First of all, we got it off of Etsy, which I, I don't know why I do this anymore. What? It, 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 Etsy really stands for everything takes seven years. I don't know why anybody orders from fucking Etsy whatsoever. Everything really does take seven years. Right. Case in point, I sure. bought a magnet. This is a real, this is a true story. I bought a magnet two months ago. It was about, it's about this big. It's going to stick it on the fridge, take a, an Instagram story of it. Very tiny joke, $5. Sure. Guess what hasn't shown up yet? Really still. Five. $5 magnet I ordered off of Etsy hasn't shown up. This was a table from Georgia Artisan. And here's where things get crazy. And this is why I, I'm going to absolutely bury them on this show is this is one of the most insane stories that has ever happened to me regarding a company Okay, that I really want to get the word out there not to use this company for anything because shit got Creepy, like in a horror film, creepy, where I was just like, yo, what? What? We ordered this table, mm-hmm. uh, order it in January, four to five weeks. Okay. It was supposed to be here by your birthday. Your birthday is the end of February. Right. Awesome. February comes and goes. Nothing. Fine. Yep. Call them. Hey, guys. I'm sorry. We're like two weeks behind. No big deal. You'll have it mid March, you know? Second right. week of March. Second week of March rolls around. Nothing. Hey, man, that table, you know, the one that was supposed to be here by the end of February, now, now mid-March, it's not here. What's, what's up, man? Ah, running a couple weeks behind. You'll get it at the end of March. End of March rolls around. Sure. 
no table. Got it. Call in April and I'm not so happy about it. Right. Hey, guys. Now it's like. What's up, man? What's going on? Yeah. Got family coming in for Easter. Uh, a lot Love of, to lot have of people. that table. Love to have that table, bro. Oh, no worries. You'll have it at least a week before Easter. It's no okay. problem whatsoever. Okay. Nothing. Right. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Easter Sunday rolls around. Nothing. Yeah. Still don't get the table. Call back. And now I'm upset. I'm, I am, I'm like a Drake song. I'm upset. I am upset. I am, I'm heated at this point, but right. not hot. Right? I just turned the stove on, and you can touch it, and there's heat, but I'm not hot yet. Mm-hmm. I'm heated. Right. So I call and say, hey, man, that table I've been calling you about for the last two months. Got an ETA on that. What's, uh, what's the whole sitch there, guy? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm running the eye and I can get it to you in two, two, two more weeks, right? What? Well, two more weeks, we had to go to San Antonio. We shot some shows, uh, did some, some, some live shows for, for Drinking Bros and some other things. And I said, all right, man, my mother-in-law is in town. We have a small child. Yeah. Eight months old. I also have a five-year-old. She's watching both of them. The table is supposed to come at 5.30 on a Friday. Right. 5.30 p.m., okay? Usually- We're going to be out of town. We're out of Just town. please, like, you know- Don't fuck this up. Right. We're gone. And she's here with two kids. Mm-hmm. She could be at the park. She usually likes to take them down to the park or something to play. I don't know, so we'll be there at 5.30. I can, mm-hmm. I can promise you that. Mm-hmm. 5.30 comes around. Sure. I get a phone call from the delivery people at Georgia Artisan. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it, first of all, it's a woman. And she sounds like a spooky lady from a horror film. Like, don't, large get, don't go in there. Yeah. Don't go down at the end of that thing. So Ooh. I get this phone call and she's like, she's like, hey, um, we're having car trouble. Don't think we'll be able to make it. Tomorrow morning would work best. I'm like, fuck. So I call your mom. Right. And I say, hey. But that is like. Okay. Fine. Fine. You're, you're having car trouble. I'll tell her. Yeah. I'm, See you in the morning. I'm pissed. No bigs. Right. But, but at this point. All right. Cool. It's a little annoying, but it's not yeah. the end of the world. Okay. She can do nine. That sounds good. Great. 9 a.m. She thanks me. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate it. Sure. Again, it's kind of a creepy voice like I'm in a horror film. Right. At this point. Right. Out of Georgia Artisan. Mm-hmm. And then the phone rings. It's 9.30 at night. 9.30 that night. Hey, we fixed the car trouble. Now it's her husband. It's not her. Mm -hmm. And the two of them are driving. I've never met met a man and wife who delivers furniture together. Right. It seems weird. Yeah. Seems weird to ask your wife. Yeah, because is she lifting shit? Heavy furniture. Is she just driving? Or like, is there another... It's just one guy by himself to lift it. I don't but know. if you're in a delivery truck, it's 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 a two seater. Sure. What sure. Because uh, apparently they have other shit to deliver, right? And I'm like, right. man, that's fucking weird, right? right? I get a call from now the husband at 9:30 that night on Friday night. Uh, hey man, um, so I need to I need to to take this to your place tonight. You know, uh, we fixed the car trouble. I'll be there in a couple hours. Couple hours. So that puts you at what? What, what you reckon? Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty at night. Eleven thirty. To deliver furniture to a house that we told you. My mother in law. Two kids. Yeah. We're not there, bro. Yeah. Like, and and no. Hey. So I go. Hey, no. man. No. It's eleven. Th- it, it that's eleven thirty at a minimum. And let's face it, you were late all goddamn day. It's probably a midnight so delivery. So you're gonna have to stay somewhere. Who's gonna be up to let you into the kitchen? Oh, no worries. The mother-in-law I told you about with two kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll just get right up and you guys can assemble this fucking table inside my house from midnight to what, one in the morning? So let's just keep it at nine. Let's like forget this call ever happened. Oh, what else did they say? That's what, so that's what happened. So I say, hey. What else did they say though? They- no, hang on. So I said, look, man, that's not going to work for me, right? We agreed on 9 a.m. 9 a.m. is fine. She'll be up. Uh, the kids will be up. We're at a work dinner, by the way. Yeah, we're at work, this work time. So we have, we're having to get up. I, I gotta get from up from the a table. work dinner, and which is so fucking rude. But it's like 
I don't like to use cell phones at the table. No, I don't like to but text. And it's I don't like, one of I don't, the things where I don't want them coming to mother-in-law's house, knocking on the door. Yeah, so, at 1130 at night. So we're getting up from this work meeting. So I get up. I go outside. I'm on the phone at dinner. I don't like to do that um, whatsoever. I don't even, if I can help it, I don't like to take my phone in. Exactly. But I was worried about this fucking call right. from these people, right? Um, they said, hey, man. We can't deliver it since we since you're not going to let us deliver the the table at 11:30 at night. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just going to skip your house then, man. We got like we have like seven or eight other deliveries they to said go. We're going to sleep in your driveway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they go. Uh, yeah, let me let me back up. They're like, we're going to skip your house uh, unless we can sleep there. And I said, sleep there. Sleep, at our house? I go sleep where? Where where do you want to sleep? Well, we want to sleep in your driveway until your mother-in-law wakes up, um, or we're going to have to skip your house. We're going to sleep in your driveway. And I said, hey, man. Never heard of anything like this. And look, again, ever. this is not a $20 table. We're not going to say how much it was, but it, we're not spending. I, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't fucking Ikea. We're not spending, you know, a little amount. This is a pretty expensive table that. Pretty pricey table. Pretty pricey um, was kind of a big deal. We had it custom made. So when you it's one of those tables that's going to last you for 10 years. Right. And it's so nice. And you talk to the guy and you get it custom. Having this be the delivery process is very jarring. And at that point, it just was a little bit scary. Like my kids and my my mom are in my house. These people are getting mad being rude and telling me they're going to sleep in my driveway. Like at this point, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Cause I'm not there. Same. And Ross is not there. So it's like, you know where we live. You're pissed off at us and you're just creepy and stupid enough that you're going to ask to sleep in my driveway. So I don't know what else you're kind of capable of. So carry on. So I said, look, man, that's definitely not going to work. We have like HOAs and shit. We can't, you can't put a fucking delivery truck overnight in the middle of a neighborhood. And the sheriff lives across the street for Christ's sakes. And also that's the weirdest thing to ask a customer. Of all time. Because now I feel like I'm in a Jordan Peele movie at this point. Yeah. Now we're just like, we have entered crazy town. We have entered crazy town. Crazy town in Georgia Artisan. So I'm like, no, you're not sleeping in my driveway. We agreed on 9 a.m. I took the fucking phone call and that's it. Yeah. See you at nine. See you at 9 a.m. Wake up the next morning. Uh, we're, we're out west. So we're a couple hours behind. And I get no text from your mom or anything. And I'm like, yeah. man, that's weird. She sent us a picture of the kids. Old table's still there. Old table's still there I'm in like, the picture. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, hey. So I called the delivery people and I said, hey, man, would you guys miss the 9 a.m. thing? No, since we couldn't, since you didn't allow us to sleep in your driveway. We left. We left because we have seven other orders to make up and down the coast. Mm -hmm. And I said, so, and they go, we don't, we we don't want to be late on those deliveries. Sure. And and I go, so you were fine to be late to my house, Mm -hmm. right? But not everyone else's. No, you know, we just decided that. The other seven would be more important and, uh, and that you could deal with it. That's, mm-hmm. what, that's what the delivery guy tells me. Now I go fucking ballistic on this guy. Right. And I go, you motherfucker. You asked to sleep in my fucking driveway with your wife overnight. And then you skip my house entirely saying you'll get to me at some point next week. And I go, have you lost your fucking mind? Then he goes, I bet you don't have a lot of friends. Turned super creepy. And I'm like. What? And he goes, friends would never talk like this to other friends and never let them do things like this. That's what he says to me on the phone. He's not your friend. No, he's the fucking delivery guy who I don't know at Georgia Artisan. Don't know who that is. And I go, what did you say to me? Yeah, you know, you just seem like a, a person who isn't just doesn't have a lot of friends in real life. And I go. Cool, motherfucker. Here's the deal. Because I'll tell, we'll talk about the story live on air. And we can decide who's friends with who and whatnot and all this other shit. I call the owner on Saturday and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? 
Yeah. Because not only that, but I had ordered something again in the past, like a year ago, that was crazy expensive from him. And I'm like, there's no way that, that you do business like this. Oh, you know, I just, uh, uh, we would have been late on the other houses. And I go, oh, so you, you just decided that I was the so collateral damage knew. in this. And mm-hmm. you were like, ah, we'll piss off this guy. Fuck him. Mm-hmm. Fuck everything he does. And all of the, the, the work it took to get the mother-in-law and all that shit to stay home and ready and everything else. Fuck him. It's one versus seven and you're going to lose in this. Mm-hmm. So guess what, Georgia Artisan? I'm not going to lose in this. Um, I tell you what, because this, this table is for Jables. Feel free to hit them up at 478 227 3892 at Georgia Artisan. And just call and say, hey, Ross wants to know if he can sleep in your fucking driveway. And the thing is, listen, if the guy had the owner had been like, how do I make this right? Can I deliver it personally? Didn't. Then it would have been turned around. But what happened was he continued down the same path and was like, these same people can deliver it next week. And our point was, we don't want these people at our house because of this, these things that we said that happened. So what, (laughs) what is our other option? No other option. No. They're the only ones. Nope. They're the only ones that can deliver it. So what do you want to do? Well, what we want to do is uh, let people know how you do business um, and get our money back. And that's what we did. But there were things. And by the way, this is just, you know, business 101. I know he's a, you know, it's a small business and it's. We we try to, we try to support local companies all the time. You guys do with it what you will. We're just telling you, you know, it's this, it's just the biggest. It's one of our biggest pet peeves, like people that just do business in this way. Again, there were things he could have done to make it right. Yeah. Right? And we, we, I don't care if it's two weeks from now, if he says, listen, do you know what I mean? Like we shout out people me, on the show all the time for great work. They're great, great companies, work, all great shit. companies. And I think yeah. we even shouted them out the last time that they got us that we got a table from them. And it was a really good trick that they used where the first thing that you get from them is delivered <laughs> by the owner and yeah, he yeah, comes yeah. and he's just such a great guy and he puts it together again and he keeps telling you, you know, things, products that he has. And so it's a really great trick. And then when you do order something else, the Clampets come to your house and large Marge and they fucking ask to sleep in your driveway. Yeah. And then they skip you. And then the owner himself, the guy, the really nice guy that came to your house tells you to go fuck yourself so that's the trick that they pull on you yeah so if you do order anything from them i get i guess maybe the first time would be good but if you ever try and order anything else um be prepared to possibly be kidnapped it felt like like the movie us with jordan peele where yeah. i was just like yo man are you just showing up in my it house and you want to sleep crazy you want i mean it was crazy it so felt yeah, crazy give georgia artists in a shout out at 478-227-3892 and then just say hey, look Ross Patterson really wants to sleep in your driveway. That's it. He wants to sleep in your driveway. Also, you can go to Google on there. Um, hit them up. The, the reviews. They're, 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 they're steadily going down right now. They're at a four. They're at a four or five. I think we can get them down to a one five. And just say, hey, man, we don't appreciate delivery people that want to sleep in your driveway overnight. I think maybe they should switch their business model because they do make great furniture so they should maybe switch just their... make something once a year no just sell in georgia <laughs> right like yes. um your delivery area is only in the you know in georgia yeah you can't go anywhere past that um and i think really that's the only way that you can make money because i actually don't see how you can make money delivering these <laughs> handmade tables all over the u.s for the amount of money and then the people that you're using are just going to lose you business. It's so, fucking insanity. You know, it's, a shame. it's a shame. It's absolutely insane. I've never, I've never had anything like that. I mean, it was so creepy. So <laughs> fucking creepy. Yeah. Can I sleep in your driveway if not? And again, I'm we, gonna I'm going to say this. Like, we would have been fine with, okay, you have car trouble. That's fine. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow at yeah, night. Tomorrow. Even it was like, hey, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah you know, we're going to have to come back next week. I don't know. But it was, there were other things in there that made it just like, 
Fuck you. I know. I was, like you can be cool, you can be cool, you can be cool, and then there's a certain point where you're just like, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah. And that's basically what they, I mean, we would have been, you were cool with, it's going to take four weeks, two more weeks, two more weeks, two more weeks, four more weeks, blah, 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 da, da, da. And then to have this be the culmination of all of this. Four months later. Is just, it's, again, it is a shame. Yeah. And talking to that, that delivery couple on the phone, it's like they wanted to wear my fucking skin. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Georgia Artisan. Go ahead and, and, and look them up. Go, go ahead and go to Google. Just say, hey, man, here's a one star because uh, Ross Patterson has let people sleep in his fucking driveway. It's not a sanctuary city. No. My, my fucking house is in a goddamn sanctuary city. So that's why I, shitty, I am hot, Jabes. Uh, luckily, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And that was Meghan Markle giving birth. They getting named the royal baby, baby uh, Gary. baby. They didn't name it yet. It's Gary. No. Yeah, it's a, it's the royal baby Gary. Mm. Here's Gary. Here's Gary. There's Gary. <laughs> what if they really didn't name the fucking baby? Uh, nobody knows yet. <laughs> they haven't released the name. <laughs> oh, James. I put a picture on our uh, Ross Patterson Revolution Instagram mm. of your conspiracy photo. Uh-huh. Uh, you're not alone in this. There is. A, oh, I know. It's what I told you. There's widely a, there's known. There's a handful of people out there who widely known. Who buy a lot more shit. than that. A lot more than that. The other thing that made me happy was that Amy Schumer had her baby on the exact same day. Awesome. You want to talk about, you know, your moment, and she had a horrible pregnancy by by everything she said. Right. Uh, uh, canceling tour dates, all that shit. I, and I get it. You had a you had a rough go as well on mm-hmm. this last one, and, and I understand it. Whereas Meghan Markle didn't, right? And it was perfect, and she mm-hmm. traveled the world, and was amazing. Uh, yeah, I heard she was doing. Real, I heard she was doing yoga uh, up until like right. She was yeah. doing CrossFit right until the baby started crowning. I heard Meghan Markle CrossFit. Yeah, she was because she was like the baby just didn't affect her. You know, yeah, she lived a normal really life, insider. and. Um, she went on about her business every day mm-hmm. and and the surrogate uh, <laughs> had the pregnancy. So she was able to do all the things that she needed to do to That's her. Really the only way to, to Amy Schumer's credit, though, she goes, here's our royal baby. And that right. was her post on Instagram it was pretty funny because, I mean, dude, you have a baby then it, on the day of the royal birth. <laughs> Forget it. Nobody cares. She also had a shirt on that says, I hate Mondays. <laughs> which is so good as much as i dislike her yeah i don't mind her you know, i don't mind her, her last special was good it wasn't it was. revolutionary I, I liked her but... i liked her before she you know became famous and uh famous and then a feminist right because she was a not famous feminist yeah well that's what happens she was definitely not before she got famous that's what so. happens you get like guilty that you're a woman that's famous I think you get guilted into into like making it a platform in, instead of just like why. being famous and, yeah. and getting to where you have gotten just purely because you worked fucking hard and you're the funniest and whatever you have to, I guess you get guilted into using the platform so that other people can have opportunities just like you. Yeah. And it just doesn't really work that way. And you yourself should know that you worked your fucking ass off. In fucking dirty ass clubs with dudes everywhere yeah. to get where you're at. Yeah. So it, it, you don't need to pull someone's hand up like and make it easy for them. And that's a hard no. knock life, man. That's uh doing doing clubs across America. Oof. Yeah. It's not fun. I told We're this... just comedy clubs in like LA every yeah. night or New York every night. I mean, dirty, depressing dudes. On dudes, on dudes, on dudes, on dudes. dudes. I told this story on Drinking Bros, and I, I'm not sure if I told it on here yet about doing stand up and like why. It, well, it was a comedian on the show. I was like, I don't understand why you don't do stand up anymore. And I was just like, man, you have to love it to go into those clubs where some nights there's 40 fucking people and all of that shit. And it's, you're right, it's just dudes on dudes. Every, it's, it's depressing. Mm hmm. Um, dark, usually, smoky, smelly. You, you, ah, not smoky anymore because they don't let, allow you to smoke in there anymore, which is great. They used right. to, they used to, and it was just yeah. like a cloud of whatever. Um, but you have to love it. Um, and I've, I've kind of turned a, a new leaf on some comedians 
that maybe aren't as famous or I didn't think is funny and all that shit because they're out there and the banging it in the clubs every night where you're just like, Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's turned into a different environment now through podcasts and shit like that. Yeah. Um, there's almost like a cheat code. If you have a big podcast, you can do right. a lot of stand up. Cause I look, I get hit up all the time to, to get booked for, for shows. We've, I've done a few here and there and, um, but I don't love it enough to, to go out there and do it. She did. Amy Schumer did. And she, Started from the bottom, now she's here. I just don't, I don't know what happens in that transition. I don't know what that turn is. You know, once you become famous and rich, you where you're like, snapped ah. at me? No. Oh. <laughs> Amy Schumer. Like, what's that, what's that change, that overnight when you become rich and famous as a comedian? Why does it go another direction? It's strange to me. Uh, and it happens with female comedians more. I noticed that. Sarah Silverman's like that. Uh, Amy Schumer was like that. Chelsea Handler was like that. Where it's just this switch into, I'm super rich and famous, and now I want to become a, a feminist and an activist. And I don't, I, don't, I don't understand why. I don't see a lot of dudes do that, do you? No. Dude comedians? No. Usually it gets worse. Yeah, but again, so like I look- was saying, um, they get guilted or feel guilt or talk to enough from people who? from women, from feminists, from from other women is what yes. you're saying. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, I, I that, can see that you feel like, or fans that you know write to you, DM you, whatever, and you know you feel like you have this platform of like, you know, it's so hard for when you you get um not survival's guilt, but what is it? Something like that, so a kind of like survivor's guilt in a way that you made it. Yeah. And you now can, it's like, I feel like there's some black people that feel the same way, right? They're like, I've made it. I have this platform now. I can help people in my community that can't, you know, don't have the same opportunities or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, white males don't usually need to help their community, I guess, or they don't get guilted into making sure that other white males have the same opportunities that they do. True. That's true. I, I yeah. I, and so I you can either that. be like, fuck you to your fan base or whoever, or people that keep messaging you or people that you talk to or whatever, you can say, fuck you and just keep going. Yeah. Or you can, you know, change your whole <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can change your own, your whole shit for sure. Uh, you want to talk about guilt and not feeling guilt comedian wise i man i watched this crazy interview on dane cook um on your mom's house the podcast your mom's house okay by the way we uh, everybody keeps hitting us up of like i don't understand why you guys don't go on there like the four of you guys it would be really funny it would be funny i mean but we're not in competition at all. No, no, no. I, and, and by the way, we would, I would welcome it. I would, I would, yeah. would definitely go on the show. It'd be I mean, fun as shit. Of course we would. I like both of them. Um, They're really funny. Anyways, they, uh, on YouTube, by the way, subscribe to the show on YouTube where all these shows are video for Ross Patterson Revolution. We're paired with them a lot of like recommended to this show and that show. And uh, um, so I, I, I flipped on one of their episodes um, on the plane the other day and it would, Dane Cook was on. Mm-hmm. And Dane Cook, I don't know if you know this, whatever you think of him, you think of him. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bash him one way or the other. Right. I, I think me personally, he kind of brought comedy to where it is today and revolutionized it and, and all this shit, regardless of what you think of his comedy, he had his time and he did his thing and, and it's incredibly difficult and hard and all that shit. What I didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. And how his brother stole all of his money. I didn't know that. Like $18 million. His brother and his, and his brother's wife. And he told this story on your mom's house of how it, ga- it got to the point where, you know, obviously this was fraud and like bank fraud and all this shit. And he put his, he had to send his brother to jail and his wife. Yeah. God. And he told this crazy story. And he told it with, you know, kind of a comedic, take on it like he he was able to laugh at himself about it or laugh at the situation kind of but the story was bananas how did they do it how did they steal from it so he was the brother was the business manager Mm -hmm. all through his time and all this other stuff and blah 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 and 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 so all these years later he was just like man you know the career wasn't his career was tanking um kind of by his own doing and uh, wanted to switch everything. 
agents, managers, business managers, all of it, all the way around and just kind of get into different things. Um, if you're at home and you're like, dude, why, why do you need a new business manager? Some business managers in LA in particular in Hollywood have some insight on some entertainment things that you can get in on from a business standpoint that look, you could make more money off the money you're making by investing in other things other than traditional stocks and bonds and things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, some of the things like Ray J is a perfect example. Um, I just had a phone call with their people on drinking bros. He's got these headphones that are incredible, right? Yeah. Ray J. Ray J's got headphones that are incredible. Ray J sells those scooters. Just, you know, one of those scooter companies, those birds, mm, the birds or something. just sold his share in that for like $1.8 million. And it's like, dude, Ray J has made more money than Dane Cook, who has worked his entire career at this point, just off of smart investments. Ryan Reynolds is another one. Ryan Reynolds got into like Napster and all that shit way back in the day and Netflix and everything else. And I, Ryan Reynolds is richer than Jesus. The richest one is Ashton Kutcher. Right. Ashton Kutcher's put all this money into angel investment companies and all that shit. He was, when he got divorced with Demi Moore, I, I think he was like he had $580 million and that nobody knew. And they were like, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus Christ, 70 shows pays well. And he was like, no, I yeah. use that money for other things. Dane Cook wanted to do the same thing. I'm like, all right, let's deal with some other people that are in the know with some of these specialty items that are coming out. You know, dude, headphones, birds, all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you can get in on that. Whereas your brother leaving in Boston, Massachusetts, isn't going to have access to those conversations, right. those type of meetings whatsoever. And so he started calling him saying, hey, man. I, I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch business managers. And, uh, you know, you're, you're still going to work for me, but we'll put you on like touring and merchandise and, and running the stores for those and everything else. Mm -hmm. And you'll have your same salary and everything else. And like uh, he kept getting like the kind of the runaround or whatever. And finally he went into a Bank of America and he went to the one. He even named it on the show. It's like, I went into the one on Crescent Heights in Santa Monica. Right. I went in. Obviously, I'm Dane Cook. People know I'm Dane Cook. Mm -hmm. And they were like, man, we don't have any of those account numbers that you're telling us. None. Even the corporations, you know, it's an EIN number mm -hmm. that, you, that you need. Mm -hmm. um, and they go, all of these numbers don't match any real corporations. Nothing. And it was just like, ah, this can't what? be right. And a man, the manager came out from Bank of America, took him into a private room and sat him down and said, you have nothing. Like, there's no, none of this money exists. Um, and he didn't pay any taxes for him for all of these years. So he owed the IRS all this money back taxes. And I mean, it got even wilder. The police called a year later and said, hey, man, we recovered some money from you. So we're going to, we have this money for you or whatever. He was able to clear things up with the IRS once the brother went to prison mm -hmm. and all that shit. And they were like, all right, cool. You know, we'll give you that money back, but he had to pay it all right. and then get it back yeah. later. Um, so out of this like $18 million or 17 or $18 million that was stolen, the, when the police called and they said, we, we've recovered some. And he was like, what do you mean you've recovered some? And it was like, well, we opened up one of the walls in the house and we found $800,000 inside the walls of the nice. house. <laughs> Nice. Of the brother's house. Yeah. No. And so with Dane, no survivor's guilt or anything else. Like he was just like, well, I guess it's time to go back to work and, you know, I'm going to do what I do and rebuild and, you know, fuck it, move on with his life. I can't believe it. I would be bitter oh till the very, very God. end of. Well, I'm bitter over smaller amounts of in money. A, I mean, to not check on anything ever. Is, is, cra yes, is crazy. And so you have to, in a, you know, he must be taking some kind of responsibility and just being like, I'm changing the way I do things completely now. Or right. it's like, it doesn't matter. My brother, a, another financial, you know, advisor, manager, whatever, mm -hmm. you're still gonna check all the things, just make sure things are, yeah. I, to me, that's kind of crazy that he would not have checked anything or corporations or LLCs or taxes um, at all. Well, so the, well, the weird thing is, that's the, the weird thing is, is like, you know, when you, if you're moving along life, right. And I agree with you. I don't know how anybody does that. I check my account bit to where all you're the time. Like, oh, I'll just like, just to make check, sure. Yeah. You know, or you get a copy of like your taxes. They did them. 
they did them. It's all they have the files, but you get the copy and you have it or whatever. It's like they it's, were... it's like with Georgia Artisan, right? I checked my fucking account to make sure that money came back. Sure. Because the table was expensive. I have no way to, it's off of Etsy. And, right. and at this point, you're past like the 60 day window that's super cute. Mm-hmm. You're into five months and you're like, yo, I, I don't know if I'm getting this money back. So I, yeah. checked, I checked the account for shit like that. So we did get it. Yeah. But I, I, along the way for, for Dane Cook, he said, look, you know, I was buying houses and cars and I never had problems. And uh, everything that I was buying, like there was no issue that I ran that's into. So like, I, re- yeah. I really didn't think anything about it. And he goes, it's my brother. Why would I? And, you know, him and his wife. And he goes, uh, uh, what was it like in court? And he was like, dude, I, I sat there in court when he got sentenced to prison, him and his wife. And he goes, the brother was just like shark eyes, just dead at, straight ahead and all that other shit. And I was like, oh, man, you want to feel guilt. That I would have felt that's that's the white man guilt I would have felt if, if I were Dan Cook. Boy, that's too much money. Of putting your brother away? Of just losing that much money and trusting someone, you know, where you're just like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know that I'd be able to trust anybody after that. Um, yeah. And I think he had to reinvent himself a little bit because people just hated him. Yeah. I, it's some of that hatred was unjust, I thought, but. I think some of it, but it, some of it had to be coming from yeah. a place of like, yeah. you must have been a dick I know, for I that know. many people to say that you were a dick. Other comics, other whatever. Yeah, like, I, know, I, know, I know some pretty shitty stories about him, but yeah, I won't I go into it. Because whether or not. I think he definitely got knocked down a couple pegs, A, by his brother. That may have been the thing that was just like, oh, shit. You know, on top of everyone saying you know, that he was a dick and joke stealer and blah, 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 or whatever. Yeah. Um, that must have been, you know, the most humbling. And he had to kind of rebuild from there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll I see. guess he does like completely different comedy now. As far as like his big stuff, he says he's more like, you know, kind of lower key storytelling stuff. So. Gotcha. I don't know how that's going to work. But. Yeah, I know we've, we've chatted about Dan Cook in the past, but this story was too good to pass up where I was just like, what? That's crazy. I mean, I, wow. You always hear about nightmare stories like that. Yeah. And you wonder how it happens or why it happens. And, you know. I, I, I'm learning now that that's not as surprising as it used to be to me. I, I, you know what I learned? I've never had a business manager. Yeah. Ever. I don't want anybody else touching my money but me. If I make a mistake. Yeah, that always this, seems so weird to me. If like, I make a mistake in the stock market or otherwise, no. And, and like I go to a CPA, you know, once a year, file right. my taxes, um, but I sit with him. We go over the, every, all the shit and I do it myself. And I, I've had a few friends over the years who were like, you're, why, why do you waste all the time? You're a fucking idiot. And I was like, I just want to know where it's going, man. I, I don't really... Uh, trust There's anyone too many that much stories of the business yeah. manager stealing all the money that are, are we really like continuing to let other people be completely in charge nuts of, uh, of all our money and, and decisions and 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 that much money I mean, you have to if if I mean I just think for myself so if I'm making a certain amount and I'm working for somebody that's me and it's going through me just this millions, millions. Yeah. And I'm investing for this someone and I'm, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. what is it going to take for like them to be a dick or them to whatever to me, for me to just be like, I'm just going to take all of it because <laughs> I deserve it. And then it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know because I've never handled millions, but like. From what I know and what I've learned from working with certain people and certain things happening, money definitely completely changes you. Personality, morals, brain. I mean, you go crazy. Yeah, I, I, only, have, can. I only have one close friend who was a business manager uh, who was in L.A. And he had all of he liked DiCaprio and like all those big people and shit. And like he was the only honest one I knew. Um, and we're not, look, we're not close these days. So like, if he wasn't, I'd fucking tell you guys, I I don't really give a shit. He was the only honest one, but I I will say this. He got so fed up with like crazy amounts of like millions always coming in for these dipshits. Uh, and not DiCaprio is not a dipshit by the way, but some, some other clients. And, um, uh, he got so fed up with it. He was just like, man, I've got to figure out a way 
Because it's it's like being a porn editor, you know, like every you lose your mind eventually where you're just like, I can't edit porn all day. Like I'm just jacking off all day. Right. Imagine sitting there as a as a big time business manager watching all these millions come in. And you're not making any of it. Yeah. It, so I would, it would, the whole, I'd lose my the whole shit. idea of the job itself is just uh, setting <laughs> setting you up for failure, right? <laughs> yeah. So the whole idea that you give someone that doesn't make as much money as you all the work of taking care of your money is insane. Insane. The fact that it ever works is crazier to me. I know. I know. Um, when when people are like, "Oh yeah, the business manager took all the money," I'm like, "Yeah." Like, to get, obviously he did. What are you talking about? First of all, you can't really. He couldn't pay his fucking mortgage and he was dealing, you know, dealing with your boat. Yeah. You know? And, and first of all, you can't really get this money back because you're going to have to go to court for it. It's usually gone by that point or hidden somewhere or. When it's gone, it's Court gone. fees and all that other shit. Like it, it, when it's for, gone, it's it. gone. You're just spending more money that you don't have. Yeah. Yeah. To what? Sue the business manager that doesn't have your fucking money no. anymore. So it's like. Exactly. This when happened it's with gone, the, the Johnny Depp situation. Yeah. That one was still a little tricky though, right? Because it was like, did he or did Johnny Depp just... I, in this one, I, I, because I, I read all the stories, both sides, and like, I, I'll, I'll side with the business managers on this one, only because those emails got leaked. Right. That's what I'm saying. So his situation is, yeah. you know, these guys were actually trying to tell him to be smarter with his money and he wouldn't. Yeah. And so for once, it's like the, the actor lost all of his money. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Through the business manager, but they were just doing what he told them to do. Yeah. And they tried to, to tell him numerous, numerous times. Like, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to chat about uh, was that Matt Gala thing happened last night. I know. I, our invitation must have gotten. Lost in the mail, I think, probably. Yeah. Probably. I don't, I don't know where that is. Our mail's been fucky. You know, we moved and stuff. So, um, anyways. What is it? Can we talk about what it is? Because we talked about The Met Gala? Yeah. What? It's it, a big fucking piece of shit. Here, here's the thing. You, you wear these dresses that are crazy. I saw the, the Lady Gaga thing dress. And that was cool. It was cool, but it was like 30 feet around, right? Yeah. Where do you sit? What? So she, but she did a whole performance where she took that off, took that off, took that off, and then she was left with just like a really small dress. So she did all of this at the bottom of the stairs. Okay. And it was like this big performance. The guys like lifted up the dress, and then she took that off, and then she took the underneath, and then finally she was like brawn panties. Gotcha. Uh, and an umbrella. Right, right. So talk about where she's going to sit. I mean, she's. Wearing nothing, right? Basically. But what do you do once you get inside with all that crazy shit on? Yeah. Like I saw Katy Perry was as a a fully lit chandelier. Is there anything worse than Katy Perry <laughs> these days? She does these fucking stupid costume things constantly on American Idol. She went to the fucking Met Gala after party as a cheeseburger. And it's the it's the same thing of her being like I'm just a kid I'm just a little kid I'm just like Katy Perry reminds me of somebody in real life I'm not gonna say who it is but I think I fig I think I figured out Katy Perry's whole shit that it's just fake none of it's real just a bunch of weird drama and 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 that's about it and you're like oh do you really have a life or is this just a a thing for all of this shit that you do. I've heard she's engaged to Orlando Bloom, but I don't. I don't know. If I've that's heard true. too, but he has got to be rethinking that, right? Because <laughs> I heard she that makes, too. She makes a lot of money. That's great, but she is just so she's the worst. <laughs> there is nothing worse than Katy Perry to me right now, but unless you're Anne Hathaway. So <laughs> Anne, the only thing worse than Katy Perry right now is Anne Hathaway. What's your hatred? With, what's your beef with Anne Hathaway? Um, what is my hatred? She is one of those people that thinks that she's funny. She's not. Yeah. So she's supposed to be just the straight girl, right? Yeah, yeah. And she, but she tries to be funny. Right. Which makes her really annoying. She did this thing. Maybe I'll play the clip, the audio of it after this. She did this thing on Ellen that pretty much perfectly sums up uh, my hatred and now probably your hatred for Anne Hathaway. (laughs) 
<laughs> she's just the worst. She's so annoying. She's so over the top. She's awful. Yeah. Not funny. Tries to be funny. Is actually dorky nerd annoying. Yeah, yeah. But is I, somehow I, like good looking enough that she got into a different category. But is she's in this movie with Rebel Wilson. And again, she's she should be the straight girl. Sure. So she should be the one that's letting her and she's trying. She tries really hard to be funny herself. And that is where <laughs> I, I, I met her one time. It was out. It was uh, she. I, here's the thing. She's nice and dorky. And that's it. I don't really have any bad and extra and annoying and the worst. But I, but I yeah. the time I met her was a very long time ago. It was right after Princess Diaries. Um, oh yeah, so and, she has so wait, evolved. It, it I mean into that movie ex- exploded, that she and this mm. was like two weeks later, and we were at a party, and I saw her walk in, and was just kind of looking around, and wasn't with anybody, nothing or whatever, and just looked like kind of scared to be there, and I was just like, "Hey, are you okay?" Yeah, because um, I, I wanted I wanted to just say, "Hey, man, you're super fucking famous. Like you can just roll in, do whatever, do whatever you want." Mm-hmm. She just seemed like it wasn't her vibe you know like like that when you're trying to be cool in an industry of cool which is what hollywood is or pretends Mm -hmm. to be or whatever and she's not Mm -hmm. that's tough i think man uh but i I don't know what the the rest of the shit she went through that guy could have fucked her up too remember that guy another guy before that she was fucking annoying (laughs) before that she was the worst before that remember the guy she was engaged to before les Les miserable is also like complete it just completely perfectly sums up <laughs> and she's just and then it's you know at the award show um, she dated that work. guy she was engaged to who got who was again another guy who was just siphoning millions off of people and ended up going to mm-hmm. to jail mm-hmm. for a very long time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh they were engaged flying around in private jets meeting the pope and shit and sure. uh i think that that also had something to do with it she also stopped she stopped drinking I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, whatever. She's a mom. I, I, I don't, I don't if hate. If you're going to not have a glass of wine. I, I, I look, by all accounts, I, I, th- I think she said it in passing of like, hey, I'm just not going to do this anymore. And then uh, she was on Ellen was just like, look, man, everybody's like, dude, are you fucking sober Sally now and just mm-hmm. boring? And she was like, no, man, like, uh, you know, I still have a glass here and there. No, it's just she like, doesn't. I'm not, really? No, nothing. All right. Nothing, because she's a mom. <laughs> she's a mom. That'll last. She's a new mom. That'll last about. Uh, she wants to be there for her child eight more every months. second of the day. That does nothing <laughs> for your child. That doesn't do them good to be there every second of the day for them in their face. I promise. That's not what you need to be doing. Do you know what I'm saying? You need to be fucking relaxing at the end of the night so you can start again the next day. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm sure she doesn't have the same stresses because she has the nanny. She has the thing. So yeah. like she she doesn't. She's Anne Hathaway. Yeah. So when she gets home at, you know, the end of the day or whatever, instead of having a glass of wine because you've been with your kids all day or dealing with them all day, you, that's the only time that you have with them. So, yeah, maybe you shouldn't be drinking for the hour that you have with your kid a day. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I don't know. Maybe. Um, but Katy Perry, so in like American Idol and stuff, she does this thing where she dresses up in these just big foam things to like make herself unattractive. But then her like fully makeup face is like in the middle and she dresses up like Ursula and nobody else is dressed up and they're trying to have like serious conversations. And she's just in the middle, like waiting for someone to be like, you're so funny. And no one makes any comment about it. She's just like, do you guys see what I'm wearing? I am so quirky and I am so like weird and out there. And no one really says anything. They're just trying to like carry on with the show. Just like do do the fucking show, do the interviews. Yeah. To, like they're just trying to get through it. Uh, I, I look. I get it, man. I, I get it. James, I don't know. If you're you on get fire. It. Today. I don't know if you get it. You're on fire. I don't know today. if you get it. <laughs> I don't think you do. Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? Oh, sure. Let's do it, James. Because a lot a lot of people might want you to go into overtime later. Oh, <laughs> everybody keeps talking about that. The, your, your song, your <laughs> overtime song, by the way, well, that you've added in the little video. If you haven't seen the little video on YouTube, again, subscribe to the show and watch it. James made a little video 
to go with her little jingle that she made, which is, it could be my favorite. I laughed for a thousand years when I saw that. Because you edit the show, so like, I don't see it until later, and I'm like, oh, that's really fucking funny. Yeah, I just do what I want, clearly. I'm going to, th- this is a weird one, man. I'm going to, uh, uh, because he's not revolutionary, really, but this movie was, I felt. Um, and when I saw this, it was kind of shocking that it was been this long, and I was just like, oh, fuck. You know when you see things, and you're, you're like, man, how long ago was that? Shit, man, I'm really fucking old. Hmm. Like, didn't that, don't you feel like that, where you're just like, wait, what? Yeah. Paul Rudd is 50? Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, this one goes out to Ben Stiller, actually. Okay. Uh, wrote and directed a movie. It was one of my faves, uh, Reality Bites. Mm-hmm. The 25-year anniversary was yesterday. 25 years of reality bites and i remember me personally when that movie came out uh you know i thought it was cool i thought it perfectly captured the time and what everybody was going for and and all of that shit and they all got together at the tribeca film festival they've been doing this a lot lately tribeca has been putting movies and casts back together Mm -hmm. uh, for like 25 years 30 years or whatever and they all came back it's like ben stiller ethan hawk Jeanine graffler they're all like doing and looking great every one of them looks amazing i know and then i'm gonna cut to the end of it during the credits when the credits roll they turn on the lights inside the theater and it's Lisa Loeb standing on stage singing. Stop. I turn the radio on, I turn the radio off, and everybody Stop. was singing my song. She looks great. I, the same. Uh, she looks the same. And she crushed the song. And I was like, what? Yeah. All of them look great. Gosh, they all just got better, I feel. It's too. weird, right? It's weird. Uh, even Because if you go back and watch that movie, and it was on, I would say... I caught it maybe four or five months Did ago. Did Zahn come back? Uh, I don't know. If, I, I, I don't know if Steve Zahn came back, actually. Um, Where I, I just kind of looked through Find the... Find me Steve Zahn. I, he, I know he lives on like a, in like a, like a farm or something. Steve. I don't, I just, he was never really into the whole scene, which is cool. Fuck it. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure if he came back. Uh, mm. I'm going to look it up. But um, anyways, they all looked great. They were all cool and like uh, everybody was thin and just you know i know all of them are working yep janine graffalo still working ben stiller still working ethan hawk all, all these Killing people it. can't work enough yeah um so yeah i when i saw it i was just like shit man renona Ryder, stranger things like she, she was there yeah she came back they all came back yeah they're, like they're all still working all still doing shit i don't mm. see zon here though really yeah zon where are you? Find me, Steve Zahn. Know. He's funny as shit, too, man. I know. Um, but I remember that movie as a kid, like, being like, oh, man, is this what it's going to be like after college? You know? Yeah. Because uh, that was kind of that, that, that movie represented everything. You know, you're in your 20s. You don't know what's going on. You're trying to find a job that you like. Right. You end up working for jobs you hate, all that other shit. And I remember thinking to myself, because it was, you know, obviously before that time for me. But I was like, I wonder if that'll, that's what it's going to be like after I graduate college and all that other shit. And it is. Yeah. And it all stays true. And like, especially the Hollywood element of it to me. Do you remember when they made like a fake, like real world or. Yeah. Or it was kind of like the yeah, real yeah, world yeah. and during yeah. with all that stuff for MTV. Yeah. Ben Stiller helps her get the show on the air and whatever. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh man. And then they go through the notes of, well, we got to change this and yeah. this and this. And oh, this and all this of that this was this totally was like, the same, too. When I got to Hollywood, it was exactly like that. And I was like, oh, fuck. Reality Bites nailed it. Like, that's what it was. And that was, I, I think, one of my favorite movies um, uh, growing up as a kid and all that shit. I can't believe it's 25 years ago. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> did you dig that movie? Yeah. Loved it. I did. I would do for most of my auditions, I would do this monologue, the Janine Garofalo AIDS monologue. Oh, from Reality Bites? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was awesome. It's like one of my favorite movies I used, of all time. I used to get I look like Ethan Hawke a lot um, younger. And uh, yeah, I, he was always just fucking cool to me. That guy, he's still cool. He's still cool. He's cooler now. Yeah. Than he's ever been. How is that, how is that possible? 
I think he's always, and he talked about it. Uh, he just did an interview with uh, Willie Geist. Oh, did he really? Yeah, but he talked about it. He talked about all the things that he's turned down. He talked about like turning down a pretty big movie with Jack Nicholson. Oh, that's and right. Nicholson that's right. calling him yeah, and yeah. being like, hey, because he was writing this book. Yeah. And I mean, he's just, I mean, Ethan Hawke is just, there is no one that is more true to themselves and what they're doing and more confident in yeah. anything that they choose or want to do. I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if he was a rich kid or what, but basically he just, yeah. So Nicholson calls him and is like, well, you know, and he explained to him, I'm so sorry. Like I just, I, I, you know, I made a commitment to this publisher. I can't not do it and That's if right. I don't, he was writing a book yeah yeah and he's like if I don't do it or if I take on this movie this the book's gonna suffer and I'm just what I have to choose what I've already whatever and the guy was like and Nicholson was like it sounds like you have a book to write and it's just like to be able to say that to, to Jack, Jack Nicholson right <laughs> because you believe in this other project and you know it's not going to be this you know the same kind of money or the same kind of notoriety or anything and doing these like Russian plays in New remember York. That, remember that play that was 12 hours? It was 12 hours all in he Russian. he fucking wanted to. Yeah. And he is what a lot of actors and whatever people try and say that they are, which is just like true themselves and they don't right. do it for the fame and they just do it for like the love of the actor as they're in a Marvel movie, right? But he is the only one that has actually done and, you know, he made the fucking boyhood for 12 years. Yeah, it's like yeah, he's yeah. the only one that does shit purely because of how he feels about the project, whether it's going to make him money or not. Yeah. He's the only one I believe that really embodies that. I'd like to have a beer with that guy. Oh my God. And, but he's so just, smart just chat with him about stuff and, and creative that it's, he's all over the place as well. So it's, he, you have to go on his ride. I don't know. He's not chill. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. not a chill bro. He's like always working, always talking. He's very smart. And he's like, won't stop talking. And you have to just kind of figure out just what I could tell from Willie Geist and any other interviews that he's done. Right. He, like I said, he is so smart and creative. I don't mind that. But it would be hard to. It's Well, here's the thing, especially doing podcasts. There's. Oh my God. For a podcast? Like. Well, I, cause here's the, here's the tough thing. Like, you know, you do these interviews with people. Sometimes you get nothing and people won't talk. I would rather listen to somebody talk about their entire life and, and, and so, it be interesting and fascinating and, and all that stuff. There's a list of people that I have. It's small that I'd like to sit down with and just be like, all right, what's the let's just rap about life. Him, Walt, Walt Goggins. Yes. Um, Timothy yes. Oliphant. Yes. Uh, like I, I would yeah. love to just get yeah like beers or whiskey with those guys sit in some weird bar in New York yeah. and just really rap about what's what life is and what's going on and what's important and all that other stuff. Oh my God, um, I think they're all in Brooklyn. Those guys that you named. I think Walt Goggins is in. Uh, I think he's in L. A. No, he's right? in L. A. But um, yeah, I f yeah, I know Ethan Hawke's in Brooklyn. And it feels like Timothy Oliphant is, but he probably isn't. He's probably in LA somewhere, Venice or something. Um, who knows? They're just those guys knows? are just cool. Where you're just like, man, yeah. I wonder what the deal is. John Favreau is another one. Yeah, that I, I just like to uh, to ride with, you know, for the day. Yeah, because um, he's just he's one of those dudes. Like I remember reading this interview years ago uh, about him, and he just drives his old car, smokes cigars, and just waves out the window to people. And you're like, all right. Rad, you're on the level. Like, yeah. That's it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Ethan Hawke, man, is is uh is that dude. Ben Stiller, man, shit. Um looking back on it, man, I can't believe they let him write and direct a studio movie at that that age. At that time, yeah. And he had some Nobody does that anymore. You can't do that anymore. No. And he had like some failing shows and stuff before that. It's oh, not it's like a bunch. he was a fucking he had golden this, ticket. He had like, a show called the Ben Stiller show yeah. on Fox. And which I, maybe critically, I think, done, did well. I liked which it. Which is why he, and me too, and I think a lot of critics did, but it was sort of like the state where it got taken off the air and we're like, wait, we loved it. Yeah, yeah. So it could have It was have a weird him. show, but it was, I remember him playing like Frankenstein in one of the sketches. So good. Yeah, it was really funny. Janine Garofalo's in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you can't, you can't do Andy that Dick. anymore. And somebody else was saying, yeah, Andy Dick. Andy Dick, is, look. He was so good in the Ben Stiller. He's really funny, man. He's just a really fucking nightmare funny. in real life. Totally. But, 
Um, I miss those like teen, cool teen movies. I miss like Breakfast Club and shit like that. You yeah. just cannot make that. If you're if you're going to do it now, it seems like it's got to be a Nicholas Sparks like romance thing. There's just no cool like teen movies for for kids. Anymore. And I think that's why I like the mid 90s so much. That uh, movie. The movie. Oh, the movie, the mid 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was like it wasn't anything like Reality Bites, but it was, it was a real look at, at a time in your life that when you were like when you were younger and you were looking at Reality Bites, you could be like, okay, yeah, like I, I'll be all right. I mean, it might be hard and weird, but like it will be cool. Like it'll end up okay, sure. Right? In the end, sure. And I guess that's sort of how I felt about mid nineties, as far as like kids looking at that movie being like. All right, like it'll be okay. Yeah, like I'll have my group of friends, and like shit might get hard and whatever. But well, also you, you know, you learn from them, or you watched it, and you're like, oh, I might go through this, or I might go through that uh, again with Reality Bites. Like I, I wondered if that was what it was going to be like after college and all that other stuff. And uh, I, at least I had something that got that was some small guide where I was just like, oh shit, it really is like this. Yeah. Um, there are people that are tragic. You are you are gonna have friends that are tragic who don't want to do anything. Right. You are gonna have friends that are gonna be successful and all that other stuff. Um, I just I, again, they don't do that right now, uh, and it's strange to me. Uh, other, you know, you have the other bullshit like the Netflix thing, uh, that thirteen reasons why or whatever. Yeah. And now all these kids are the suicide rate or like kids have killed themselves after watching that show on Netflix, and you are like. I know, man. Can we just have some good old fashioned teen fucking shit again? Yeah. Some teen shows. You know, they're bringing back 99210. Why can't you just recreate a, just do like another, I mean, not, not a reboot, but like, why can't you have shows like Dawson's Creek or fucking One Tree Hill and shit like that anymore? Um, according to kids, they do. They have Riverdale. They have. Yeah, but Riverdale's got like a sci-fi element to it. Like, look, Buffy. you're not, you're not going to, again, vampires. Just saying, like you're not gonna go to school with a vampire, Je- Jesse. Yeah. Like that's not gonna, that's not a real thing. Uh, I'm just talking about like teen kid shit where you're just like, hey man, yeah, like the OC. Yeah, yeah, the hell OC yeah, the OC. Is so good. <laughs> I enjoyed the shit out of that, man. So good. And you wondered if that was what it was really like. Could you die in a car accident from drunk driving? Yes. Yeah, yes, you can. You can. And she died on the show. Misha Barton died on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that was an awesome episode. <laughs> Take me back to Misha Barton dying again. You know? No, that yeah. song and like. I think we all know where we were, Jabes. We all know where we were. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd like to see that. I don't know. I don't think it's possible anymore. With everything going to China and all that other shit, you know, we looked at uh, uh, the Avengers box office it, it's now number two it just passed titanic in two weeks mm-hmm. it has passed titanic for second highest grossing movie ever avatar is number one it'll blow past that um but this shit doesn't sell overseas so like i don't know how you explain a, a teen angst comedy or drama to china mm-hmm. like that's that shit that shit won't sell over there so like you can't make it right you can't make it anymore and 70 what 75 percent of our of the box office that comes in for all these movies is from overseas. So they don't want to fucking see that shit. I have no idea. You know, what are you going to show that in Romania? No. They're building back their own houses with rocks. Like they don't want to see your problems of, yeah, for sure. of, uh, Hey man, you're smoking weed down at the river. Yeah. Somebody spilled it, dumped your, your sack down the river. Now you got to find a new weed dealer. That right. shit's not going to play over there where they're like, Oh, we're just trying to build a fucking our house back, man. With, yeah. That got a rocket through it with some rocks. Right. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That now that would be a show. Imagine, imagine the Romanian version of the UFC. Oh god. Or the Czech, uh, you know, whatever those Czech Republic, you know, those countries that are were kind of like Russia, but they weren't. You know, they might be owned by Russia, but they're they're. It's on the edge of like, hey man, are we owned by Russia? We've like we're fighting people and shit. Um, and we're trying to rebuild stuff. Are we? Are we still owned by Russia? Are we not? Like, who's the go- who's our government? Right. Like, that's the show. That would be a fun teen show for for. for you them. could call it "Who's the Government." <laughs> and it'd be like you come home from school, and you know you had to walk eighteen miles or whatever it is, and then you come to your parents. You're like, "Papa, mm-hmm. 
Who's who is who, who is, is the, government? the government? I don't know who the government yeah. is. I don't fucking know. Eat your gravel. Your mom just made you some gravel soup out in the backyard. Eat your gravel. Who's your government? Who's your government? Who's your government? Who's your government? Nailed it. I think you'll be big, James. I'm mean, just saying. I think it'll be bad. And if you're out there listening and you're trying to trademark this shit. Don't. Don't do even it. dare. Don't even dare. We're, don't we're even already dare. on the horn with, with all of our Romanian officials trying to make this happen. Every little kid's in some form of gymnast school oh, at age 12. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to do a floor routine anymore. My mom. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. Whips. The yeah. government says you have to. Who is the government? Who's the government? Who's the government? Oh, man. I enjoy shit like this, Jabes. Uh, this um, is fun today. Yeah. I'm going to play that uh, Anne Hathaway. Right now? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Play it at the end of the show. All right. I like it. I like it. I, I haven't heard it, so I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ross Patterson Revolution is available on YouTube. Subscribe uh, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. You're getting all new shows on video. Audio is still audio. It's available everywhere. And uh, we got a new host, Podbean. So I'm going to shout out Podbean uh, for hosting us. That's a, that's a fun little app that's free on every phone. A lot of people have hit us up and said, hey, man, I'm, I'm always looking for like a, a, like a good podcast app on every phone that's got all the shows Podbean's really good um and there's a bunch of them this world keeps growing and growing and growing yeah. and I, I know we're available now on 121 apps which is crazy she is yeah yeah it's wild but it's like whichever app you use yeah it doesn't really matter we're there for you um and again if you want to watch it watch it on youtube and subscribe to the ross patterson revolution for jesse wiseman aka the jables i am ross patterson good night everyone good night